If you're watching this video, you've probably already seen the video that we produced of the Cialia 57, which is an electric yacht with really surprising performance. Now, in that video, it's impossible to say everything that there is to say about the product. So I wanted to take a moment to speak to Thomas and Stan, the founders of the company, uh, just to delve a little bit more into the product. So thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much. Let's start with your backgrounds, and I'll start with you, Thomas. What, what in the partnership, what do you bring to the party for the production of the yachts? So basically, I'm an aerospace engineer with background in engineering and design of sailing boats. And this is uh, that I graduated in uh, Warsaw University of Technology, but I've done as well master thesis in uh, famous Cranfield University in UK. So this is my, my background in terms of uh, education. And from technical and uh, professional experience, I've been involved in numerous sailing boats, including racing boats on design and engineering of advanced lightweight composite structures. And, and with sailing boats, of course, the, the weight element is really quite important, isn't it? Yes, it's exactly the same with electric boats, because you need to balance the additional weight of the propulsion and you need to reduce the weight of the boat. If you don't do this, then you cannot expect uh, you know, just a good performance as we have in here. And Stan, what's your background? Um, engineer, mechanician, and with a penchant for the technology. And the last 20 years in uh, immobility, a lot of uh, propulsion uh, work and a lot of development in uh, lithium ion uh, storage systems. Uh, especially for heavy duty, which helped very much to build this uh, fantastic yacht. And you've been very involved, I think, with uh, the production of batteries on, well, on a big scale. In 20 years, how much has that changed? Well, uh, I started with a very small one for a small uh, vehicle. Uh, with uh, at that time uh, very little availability of the technology and uh, today uh, with experience we can say uh, we have uh, maybe more of the development uh, possible but uh, still uh, we need to be uh, knowledgeable about uh, quality reliability and uh, uh, not to build something that abuses the system. That is very important. Right, and that brings me on to the next uh, question I want to ask you. What, because you've worked with buses, all kinds of vehicles, what made you particularly want to make an electric boat? Uh, well, coming from the experience with a mobility on, uh, um, on wheels, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a sales, salesman. Uh, I like uh, water and I hate uh, noise and smell at the, uh, uh, at the beautiful uh, water side things like this. And uh, uh, one day uh, I had the idea to extend my experience on wheels uh, to the experience on water. In fact, uh, when you look at the immobility, uh, it is a question of uh, managing an electric platform, whether it is on wheels or whether it is on the water. The experience uh, gives you a possibility to go for it. Yeah. So who spoke to who first? Did you approach Thomas? Did Thomas approach you? How, how did that happen? Well, uh, it was me who started to investigate uh, the possibilities to make the uh, electric yacht. Uh, well, we crossed uh, Thomas uh, with uh, when we were discussing uh, electric um, a catamaran. Uh, well, we still think about electric catamaran, but uh, we think that the business uh, is uh, um, more versatile, or opportunity is more open uh, for a monohull, so we went for it. Yeah. And what did you think when you started uh, considering the proposal to, to make an electric boat, especially coming from sail? I thought motor is like the enemy of sailing, <laughs> sailing yachts. In, in some cases, yes. You know, our, our uh, nose has crossed on this 62-footer in the end of the electric catamaran, which was meant to be really fast and electric. 
uh, and so on. So uh, for me, it was like, okay, Stan has some experience. He knows what he's doing. Uh, I and I was involved in their own novel architecture and uh, structural engineering to make it yeah. lightweight. Uh, and I was purely looking at this and at this project, and it was for me like, okay, really innovative. It took me a while actually to understand what this all is about and. I got a moment of uh, brilliance idea that actually it makes sense. So this is the moment when Stan has asked me, you know, Tomasz, actually I'm looking at the motorboat as well in the same time. And what do you think about this? So that, that was the idea that, yeah, actually motorboat makes sense as well if it's approached in a correct way. And this is the moment when I changed my approach, not only from naval architecture and uh, structural engineering of the catamaran, but actually managing entire project in terms of uh, motor electric boat. Uh, when you discovered that the boat was going to do 26 knots, in fact, today we did 27 and a half, I think, um, yeah. when we were out. Yeah. What challenges does that bring for the structure? Of the well, boat? Uh, may, may, maybe one very important thing before we go into the detail of the structure is that the initial brief of all our ideas about developing a uh, uh, an electric uh, yacht was uh, that it has to be a real boat for a real user who is, uh, point one, not going to be a compromise. So we need a range and we need a good speed. And the second, it is going to be as easy or even easier to use it over the lifetime of the boat for the user than the IC engine uh, yeah. boat. And uh, taking these two things in consideration, we started developing the boat yeah. six years ago. Because actually, if uh, a yacht like this could only do seven or eight knots, yeah, not so much fun. This boat, uh, when it was out of the, uh, well, um, uh, um, uh, clean, out of the shipyard, uh, we made a 32 and a half knot because it was a uh, light boat. Yeah. Now it is well equipped uh, with persons on board, uh, water, etc. So it's, uh, it's um, doing, as you said, 27, yeah. 28 knots. But uh, that's still a very good speed for, uh, for such a boat. Oh, goodness, yeah. And you went out, I don't know if you both did, but I know that you went out on the early sea trials. Yes, um, I was I was on the very first yeah. from the very beginning. It was during the COVID pandemic, exactly in the middle of COVID, uh, when we we're doing sea trials in in the northern Europe. In the basically, it was in April. Uh, it was it was cold outside, but it was excellent and amazing stuff because we decided that we cannot actually sell to anyone and actually even to say to the world anything about the project just based on the renders. Yeah. Simply because of Stan's experience with past projects. Yeah. how it went, there was always a prototype, especially in heavy duty industry, and always something was not working. In our case, we take extra care because it was so expensive for us to yeah. develop and it took so much effort and time to build a boat that we decided to put the boat unfinished first on the water, right. see and check the propulsion system, check the, you know, all the safety features first. After checking safety features, then we went to the stage where we were checking performance. And it was amazing the first day when we achieved this, you know, not only top speed is one of the factors, but another factor is the top performance in terms of propulsion. So we achieved 800 kilowatts after a few days of checking, and it was amazing feeling that yeah. it's not only because it works, but as well, it works exactly as it was designed and yeah. engineered, which was the biggest achievement at that time. And even in the Baltic Sea in April. Yeah, uh, there was uh, there were still pieces of ice on the... Uh, in the port when they when, really? when we started <laughs> just yes. beside the shipyard but uh, uh amazing amazing uh, and I, I must say from my 50 years of developing products experience this is the first time that uh, the proto uh, let's say the the first number number one hull made exactly what we wanted what we decided uh, what we briefed yeah. as uh, as as a specification so coming back to the um, to the structure, uh, uh, Thomas can say certainly much more about it. But uh, you cannot uh, make the electric boat the same way as you do the standard uh, diesel engine or uh, gasoline engine boat. 
So maybe he tells you that the, this is a, not an easy story for yeah. the beginning sure. with yeah. the brief that we uh, decided to have. Yes, in, in general, uh, you have uh, so many, so different components than you have on a normal standard boat. And in the same time, uh, because we have this extra weight, we need to uh, really think, and it's a entire project, it's a global optimization really of the uh, design brief performance that we want to achieve, uh, not to exceed something. So yeah. in a normal uh, boat with diesel, it's relatively easy just to put bigger engine. On electric boat, you have no engines, you have motors. Yeah. And to put bigger engine doesn't mean that you will use it you because should. Putting bigger motor means you need a bigger battery. Bigger battery, you mean it means bigger cooling and so on and so on. Yeah. So it scales up quite quickly. So we need to be extra careful about what you put there, how you put there, how to connect all of the components uh, and really take care of the final output. So each time we were, and there were several iterations over the project, and uh, doing the study, pre-study, preliminary, and then the call, okay, let's build it, it will work. Yeah. Now something I really want to dig into and it's a delicate subject but it's an important subject um, as you know I have a YouTube channel S some videos even get millions of views um, and whenever we talk about uh, electricity whether it's hybrid diesel electric I often get comments from people who are very very scared of batteries on a yacht and you know, I, I watch uh, Sky News almost every day, and, and quite recently there was a lot of stories in the UK of electric scooters that would suddenly spontaneously set on fire. For people who have that concern for, for a yacht, what, how would you answer that concern? Uh, from my experience and from what we have done uh, during the 20 years, uh, uh, my previous company uh, was uh, developing the, the lithium-ion systems. Uh, we equipped uh, uh, more than 1,000 um, uh, buses in Europe or for European markets for public transportation. And I must say one clear thing. If you design properly, develop properly the system, uh, for storage of electricity based on lithium ion uh, technology and uh, you ensure that uh, by the systems uh, and softwares that you will be using electronics and also analog uh, devices that permit you to prevent the abuse of the system uh, which is very important stop uh, doing the things to the system which can create a problem. Uh, you will not ignite the lithium ion battery. And the uh, thing is, uh, people uh, don't, uh, if, if you talk about scooters, about uh, um, kind of uh, now we have this, uh, some devices that are used also in marine, etc. Uh, uh, the quality of the lithium ion uh, batteries that are used are not always uh, the, 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 the best and, uh, and some, some of them because uh, of the, um, I would say, uh, approach of uh, cheap stuff like um, economical reasons, yeah. uh, they uh, let sometimes uh, the battery abuse. So uh, give me an being abused. Of how you might abuse a battery and also how the system on the Cialia prevents you from abusing it. Abuse is uh, the, the lithium ion system works uh, two ways uh, charge and discharge. So, uh, or you, uh, you have to be sure that your system is adapted for a specific type of charging and uh, specific uh, or described uh, according to the specific spe specification the discharge uh, application so if uh, for instance our system is uh, adapted for uh, high discharge rates and high charge rates and uh, for that reason 
uh, we have a possibility to uh, run this boat on full power only on the batteries uh, for a certain period of time and after that the system will uh, degrade the, the uh, power, uh, the, the, the discharge power. Right. Uh, so uh, you will not be able to abuse by uh, discharging too much yeah. while you are discharging the battery and the capacity of the battery with the discharge is going slowly down. Yeah. So this is one the discharge is taken care of uh, yeah. by uh, m uh, quite sophisticated systems, uh, safety systems that are in the BMSs and also in some other devices that we have here uh, f uh, that are absolutely necessary for heavy duty. Yeah. You can imagine uh, discharging 800 kilowatt out of the system is not easy. And uh, it is not, uh, we, we should never burden the, the, the system with a, 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 a too big discharge, okay? Right. So if somebody uh, tries to do that in some way, the ship management system detects it, and then what will it do? It will say no. It will yeah. degrade the, the uh, signal, which means uh, you want top, and it says, uh, uh you have to be, and it is going to tell this on the screen yeah. and it is going to apply it and you cannot uh, uh, overrun. Run. overrun and, and you made the point that it'll never shut the whole yacht down. No, no. But, basically yeah. how we designed the system and one of the parts is that one of the design briefs was make it simple so anybody in the world can go, yeah. can do any time uh, during the using of the boat, he can do full power or full aft. So he, you can touch anything on the screen, you can do whatever you wish with the wheel, you can do whatever you wish with the lever, and you're not going to destroy the boat. So there are several uh, levels of security, yeah. uh, but the most important is this SMS, so our ship management system, where what you do with the throttle doesn't mean that system will do exactly the same. Yeah. Why? Because system is not stupid. It's preventing yeah. on uh, application level uh, doing uh, wrong things to the system, not only to the battery, but in general to the system. One last question. People who are interested in knowing more about it, um, I, actually it's well worth mentioning, and we'll mention this in the actual video, that this is not the only product. You have a whole product line. So if somebody's interested in this shot, or in the product line, what, what should they do to find out more? First, they should visit us. They can call us, they can email us. Uh, we are uh, exhibiting in several uh, boat shows. So uh, they can visit and see this boat, 57, product line of 59 footers, several versions. And uh, yes, get in touch with us, personally with me or with our uh, sales director. And this is the way to go. Great. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to your website in the description of the video. Right. And, and honestly, if you've got an interest in it, you and it, should reach out to them. Right. And if, if, if you want a unique boat with a fantastic propulsion, but uh, a unique uh, uh, lifestyle and uh, silence, you just come to Silent Straits, Shialia Yacht, and uh, buy one. Excellent. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you.